Guys, today we're going to talk about painting. It's one of the best things that you can do to your home to make it actually worth more money. And everybody gets in their new home and obviously wants to paint. Step one is actually a prep. You want to make sure that you do a lot of great things to make sure that the stuff under the paint looks really good too. Um, number one thing is to fill nail holes. You're probably going to have some nail holes from the last person that lived there. Um, the one tip that I'll give you on that is you want to make sure that when you're filling a nail hole, and unfortunately I don't have one here, I could put one in, but I think you guys will get it. Um, the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the actual, anything from the nail hole is actually put indented. So what I, a little trick that I like to use is just the backside of a uh, screwdriver. Um, it's kind of rounded always. And if you just take it and then you just kind of push and rotate that little dent into the wall, I'll put a little dent here, why not? You can see now there's a little dent there. Um, imagine a little nail hole in the middle of that. So then what we want to do is we want to get some products. So obviously you should have a screwdriver at your house. The other thing you should invest in um, in your home ownership would be some type of trowel that looks like this. I like an angled trowel. Um, make sure it's got a little bit of flex in it. As you can see, um, it's easy to flex. And then a trowel, I would encourage you to get a 12 inch or an eight inch trowel like this. Um, you'll find that in the drywall section, both of these tools. Don't get plastic, they don't last well. Um, I've had these for probably like 15, 20 years. And if you can take care of them, they'll last forever. And I'll give you some tips on that as well. Just these two pieces, I would encourage you to get some type of drywall tape, um, either the mesh, which I would probably encourage for most projects, or just the regular tape. This is not sticky tape. This is just like paper tape. Um, we use it to cover up cracks and big patch jobs. Um, this is a mesh tape. Same thing, um, it, it causes the cracks not to extend. There is a little bit of a stickiness on this, so this is more like a true tape. Um, and what you do is, I can't find the beginning, but you guys get it, you just roll it out, put it over the crack, and then go over this so that the crack doesn't come right back through with the drywall. I would encourage getting a couple sanding sponges. Um, these are, are really good. I tend to like getting these ones nowadays. Um, they also make them in a, a pad that's about half the size of this one. The bigger one just seems to do better, and I'll show you why here when we get to that step in the process. So couple sanding sponges, and then some plaster. Now, um, the way this looks when you open it, uh, there's gonna be a tear tab that you have to pull off first, just so you know, so make sure you pull that off before you I probably bought this a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, one tip I will tell you is when you are storing, you should always make sure that it's nice and smoothed off at the top. Um, and uh, so that you have a nice uh, storage like that. Another tip would be to put some wax paper over it. Um, this can get moldy, and if it does get moldy, throw it away. Do not try to use it if it's already been moldy. Just uh, throw it away and get some new stuff. Um, you also gotta be very careful. You do not want this to freeze. So if you are storing it over the winter months, or you are using it over the winter months, make sure that it's in your home at least 50, 40 to 50 degrees. Um, in the garage and it freezes, it will be uh, no good anymore. So you wanna get rid of that. Um, once again, so grab a little bit um, from your bucket. You're gonna put it, go ahead and put it on your larger piece here. And then that little nail hole we were talking about, we're just gonna take, as you can see, a little bit like that, centered like that. And we're just gonna kind of bring it right across. And I'm gonna bring it down way as well. Now I like to leave a little extra so that when I sand it, it's perfectly straight. So I'm just going to go over it again. And you can see there's air holes. Well, the way to get rid of the air holes is you can go a few times across or you can use your spackle knife. Kind of like Bob Ross used to do with his, uh, his paintings. And then we're gonna go ahead and once again, pull it across and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you don't get it the first time, you might have to come back and do a second coat. Um, but in most cases, it's gonna be fine. You don't wanna over, overdo it, but you wanna have enough on there to take care of the issue. 
The other thing you're gonna probably have to do is fill nail holes, maybe in trim or maybe an area where, you know, especially if you get new trim installed, you can see here we just did some new trim around this window. All I would suggest with that is that you go ahead and just take a little bit on your finger like that and then go ahead and fill the nail hole. And what I tend to do is I'll put it on and twist my finger away. It leaves a lot more mud. It, it, it is gonna shrink, so we do wanna overfill it. So once again, if I was going to be putting it on there, I would have, take a little dab of my finger, push it down, twist my finger and leave the rest behind. And then just let that dry. So that is plaster. We're gonna let it dry. Once it's dry, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and sand that. So we talked about the bigger sponge. Now, I'm a big fan of this bigger sponge because it gives you more coverage or more space to cover. Um, and then the smaller sponges, which you find a lot of people use. This gives you a little bit more finger control because of the angle of this. But let's say I'm sanding this nail right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and you can see because it's drywall spackle, it's, it sands pretty quickly and easily. And once there's actually paint on there, that thing will be as hard as the rest of the trim. So we're just gonna go slightly over it. And that's it. So you can see how quickly I've already sanded three of these off. So in like a couple minutes, I could be through this whole piece. Um, we're gonna come back and talk about caulking. But one last thing I do wanna talk about is um, when you're, you know, you got that crack that you filled and now you, you're ready to come back and sand it. Here's a giant tip for you. Um, you're gonna love this tip. One second, let me just go grab a flashlight. All right guys, I always encourage you to use a flashlight when you're dry or doing drywall sanding on flat surfaces. It's gonna show all of the imperfections and help you get a perfect finish. So here, if you look over here, you're gonna see that there's, if we were to paint over this right now, you would see all of these imperfections. You'd see this line here, you'd see even these little striations here, and you'd even see this line here. So it would, it would give you a pretty poor job. So our goal is, is to leave our flashlight here across the surface so we see all those imperfections, and then lightly come in, and you wanna go in a turning method, and you wanna start off by just getting the big ridges off. So I'm gonna get those big ridges off of there first not pushing that hard. I'm pushing very lightly and letting the tool do the work. And you can see that ridge is completely gone. So now I have no ridge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now just gonna fan in the outside. So I don't care about getting the inside anymore because it's nice and smooth already. Um, Cause if you go try to go even, you're gonna get to that tape and you're gonna have, you're gonna have to come back and put another coat on. So our goal is, is just kind of come around the edge and get rid of that, make that almost invisible. So we're gonna go around the outside, almost like a, a circle. And we're gonna kind of do that same circle motion there. And as you can see, now there's no places where it sticks up. It's completely flat. And the only reason you can see where that patch is at all right now is because it's a little different color. Okay, so here's one more tip when you're actually doing repair jobs on your wall. Um, especially when you're going over tape, you need to get a little bit thicker coat over that tape so that the mesh doesn't come through when you sand it. Um, so what I typically do is I'll put my first coat on um, a little thicker. I don't worry about this big ridge here because I'm going to come back in and fan some additional mud into that uh, crack. So this is nice and dry. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to actually take your knife um, or the bigger knife even before you get the spackle and you're going to go just slightly, lightly over it. And you can, you'll see that it will go ahead and almost like in a way of sanding it, take off the big ridges for you. So you wanna get those off so that when you're coming over with your second coat, it doesn't have that big ridge effect that you're worried about. So once again, just a light kind of like sand. You don't wanna to push too hard and create new scrapes. And then you're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of mud from the bucket again. And then we're gonna take that mud, we're gonna go ahead and kind of fill in the second area here. So you can see, Going into that. I'm not going up all the way to the top anymore. I'm just trying to fill in the space from where my that coat was in the second coat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the excess off of my big knife and leave it on my little knife. And I'm just going to come across. I'm probably just going to do it this way. And smooth it off. And you can see I got that little excess on there, and that's pretty good. Don't go back, if it looks pretty good, leave it. Don't try to make it perfect. 
you're gonna make it perfect with the sandpaper. So um, you'll find that you don't wanna keep on going back. I'm gonna do the same thing up there. I'm just gonna take a little bit more of this off of my knife. Go there. And the goal here with this step is to just make sure you're getting a little excess mud everywhere you want the mud. And then once again, I'm gonna leave that on here and then I'm just gonna come across with my bigger knife and smooth it off. Now we got this excess mud on our knife. This might have some imperfections in it and such. Don't go worrying, this is so cheap, this drywall mud. Throw this away. Wash your knives off immediately after with just warm water and dry them real good so they don't rust. And, that's, and these things will last you 100 years. We're gonna talk about caulking next. And then we're gonna get into the fun part, which is actually the paint. All right, so actually we're on uh, another step of the prep, um, really important step. It kind of makes everything look really good. And that is caulking. So I'm gonna give you some tips on caulking. Uh, the first thing I would do is there is something called painter's caulk. Typically comes in a green um, kind of caulk tube, or it would be white with green. Uh, this I always find is the best um, to go one step up. This is for paint projects. The difference between this and other is it has a little bit of silicone in it, so it does flex a little bit. So it will, as your house is drying now or um, moving a little bit, it's going to uh, stay um, without cracking. So if you've never used a caulk gun, you should buy the regular size caulk tubes and then buy a regular size caulk gun. There's a few different versions of these, but what I'll tell you is don't use the auto cutoff feature. That is not what we want to do here, and I'm going to show you why. Um, you just basically push your thumb on the release and pull that all the way back. And then the caulk gun goes in with the bottom part first, and then you tip it up, and then it, then it stays in there. Now, this type of caulk doesn't have a seal at the bottom. That's what this little guy is for. So if you're buying like a true 100% silicone caulk or you're buying a construction adhesive, in that case, you would, you could even use a little cutoff machine and then go ahead and use this to puncture that seal at the bottom. In this case, once again, this is painter's caulk. You do not need to do that, so do not do that. If you've already done it, I'm sorry, you're probably gonna have to throw that tube of caulk away and start from scratch, and I'll show you why. We wanna cut off the smallest amount that we can. I would say about that much, which is about a quarter, or I'm sorry, about an eighth of an inch, um, which would be about the width of a nickel. So we're just going to go ahead and if you wanna zoom in here, we're just gonna cut that little tip off. And you'll know you did it if you can see a little tiny circle there, which you can see is almost there. It looks like there's just a little tiny bit of plastic still covering it. So you can see right there. Oh, that was cock actually. So no plastic. So make sure you have a, a box blade, cut the very, very tip off. The smaller, the better, because then you can go and put extra uh, layers in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually come in, we're gonna caulk in anywhere where there's a seam or where there's a crack. So the way I encourage you to do this is less is more in this situation, because you can always come back and put a little bit more um, to take away, then it's gonna be, get sloppy. So I'm just gonna wait until I get, you can see I got a little tiny, tiny bit there. I'm just gonna bring it all the way and I usually stop a little bit from the bottom, and the reason is you're gonna have some excess, so you might as well just use it in, and then you can fill in the rest. So then you just take your index finger, put it into the corner, push, and slide with an even pressure. And you don't wanna to push too hard, you just wanna keep it, you'll, you'll feel the difference in the bottom. And then you can come up again, and do the same thing the other way. Now, the first few times you do this, you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot of caulk on your fingers. So make sure you have like an old rag. Um, if, if it's a little damp, it comes off even better. Um, I usually, in between um, a few times, I'll go and just wash my fingers off in the sink. It is a water-based cleanup, so you just wash your fingers. Right here, you got a little that didn't come all the way down. You're gonna come into the, the bottom and just bring a little bit more. You can always add more, like I said. Come, come up. And when, you, when you're coming from both sides, that's where doing a full all the way from top to bottom is gonna help you out. So 
that's how you caulk. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the baseboards. Um, one tip though is make sure everything is super clean. Make sure that you've done a good job vacuuming up all the dust from the, um, when you were doing the drywall, because that's all gonna sit on the top of your, um, your baseboards or on your other pieces of trim. And then when you put the caulk in there, it's not gonna stick properly. So make sure you clean it off real good. Use a little brush and a, a shop vac. Get it super clean so that when you do put this, it will stick well. Hopefully this was helpful. This is to get those corners all looking really good, fill all the gaps. And then next thing we're gonna do is actually paint. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about actually painting, which is the thing you've been waiting the whole time for. Um, we wanna make sure that all of the stuff is sanded, all of our, our seams have been caulked and um, everything has been, all the nail holes have been filled, everything's been done and vacuumed and, and sweeped with a brush, including on top of our um, the headers of the doors and stuff, because that's where uh, dust just hides out. So we want a nice clean surface to work off of, now we're there. So let's talk about paint. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna actually cut in the um, ceiling and the trim first. So you wanna get all your trim and all of your ceiling done first. And the reason for that is you could be a little sloppy because we're gonna cut in with our final color um, for the walls. So we'll do that last. So when it comes to ceiling paint, you typically wanna go with flat. I go with flat almost all the time. Um, the flat is gonna be the luster of the paint. So it goes from flat to an eggshell to like a satin to a semi-gloss to a gloss paint. Now, as you work your way up the, the palette there, um, the flat is gonna hide as many imperfections as possible, whereas the gloss is gonna show everything. It's gonna be like an auto car finish. So any type of little defect in the wall or any type of um, blemish in the wall is going to be highlighted with a gloss finish. So usually trims are gonna be a satin to a gloss, and usually the walls are going to be from flat to like an eggshell, maybe satin in certain cases. Some people in their bathrooms, in their kitchens, they want a little bit more durability, so they'll go up to like maybe a satin finish or an eggshell finish. That's what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna do a, a new type of product that acts like an eggshell, but is truly a flat. It's a little more expensive, but we'll talk more about that in a second. So most people paint their ceilings white. Um, that seems to be the, the normal in our industry. Um, sometimes people will do get crazy with colors and stuff. Um, for resale value, not a great idea. However, if it's something you love, then you know, go for it, obviously. So when we talk about ceiling paint, once again, white in a flat is gonna be your best option. I just use this uh, paint from Home Depot, it's a bare paint. Um, as you can see, the red means it's uh, a flat paint. And I use this to alter pure white on pretty much everything because it's just really sharp and clean and looks great. So um, this is the paint I suggest, but it's up to you. You can buy it from any of your suppliers or whatnot. Um, I bought this giant canister years and years ago and using it for the last couple of years. It's great, um, I just highly recommend it. Also, bare paints are heavily pigmented, so they usually go on a little bit better. So great product for that as well. On the trim, I'm gonna use this. I use this on all my trim, I really love it. Once again, interior satin enamel. So we're in a satin paint, so it's not gonna be super shiny, but it's also not gonna be, um, it's gonna be able to uh, take some beating. So great looking paint, once again, in ultra pure white. So uh, green can, you can buy a pre-mix just like this. Um, just have them shake it before you take it with you so that if it's been sitting on the shelf for a couple months, buy good paint brushes and take care of them. There's two brands that I highly recommend. One would be this brand here, which is Wooster, W-O-O-S-T-E-R, um, or Purdy. Um, the Purdy is P-U-R-D-Y, and you can see them here, the same thing in rollers, Wooster and Purdy. And if you buy a really high quality brush, you'll be able to cut the edges in really, really good. If you buy a cheap brush, you're just not gonna be able to do that. And it's gonna look like garbage and people are gonna tell you you should be using painter's tape and all that other stuff. You don't wanna do that for a ton of reasons, which I'm gonna explain in a minute here. So paint brushes are really important. I would suggest an angled brush is what I like. Um, as you can see, it goes at an angle. And this is the size that I've always had the most success with. It is two and a half inches 
wide. The wider the brush, the better you have to be. It's, this seems to hold the right amount of paint for me. I have a modified one too, where I cut the handle off. So if I got to get into tight places, I use that. But this brush is the go-to best brush you can buy. If, you're, if you feel like you're not gonna be really good, buy something a little smaller. This is a two inch. The smaller, the easier it's gonna be to learn with. When it comes to rollers, um, when for most interior painting, you're going to use somewhere between a 3 8 inch nap and a half inch nap. They're gonna create more texture the bigger the nap you get. So I always encourage, this is probably the go-to standard, a 3 8 inch nap roller. Now let me show you a little tip I've learned from you know years and years of uh, doing painting here. So we're gonna open up this roller. And as you can see, I've got it here. I'm gonna take some of this blue painter stick. So everybody's like, well, why do you got the blue painter, painter stick if you don't believe in it? Um, it's great for this. I highly recommend before you start painting, you go ahead and just go ahead and tape the roller just like this. And what I do is I just roll it on there really good like that. And then I just go ahead and I peel the tape off. And what that does is it gets all that fuzz off so it doesn't end up in your paint. So really great little tip. And you can see all that fuzziness on there. That is all not gonna end up in your paint now. So now the next thing we gotta talk about is your roller. I encourage just going with a cheap, regular um, run of the mill. You can buy them in a pack or whatever. Um, it comes with the paint tray and everything else, roller and it's nice to have one of these extension rods as well. So you can use a regular painter or a regular broomstick, but this one kind of expands out and in. So you can screw that right onto the bottom of your roller when you're doing higher spots. And this just gives you a little bit more control of your roller. Um, so it's a great tool to have. Now, if you don't want to buy one of these, they're not that cheap. They're, kind of, they're probably like 30 bucks or something. Um, you can usually find one of these rollers. I've had one this probably for like 15 years now. Um, it's a great roller. It extends out like with a twist. You got that and then you can extend that one out too. So this is also a great one. Either of these, if you take care of them, you can get a really long life out of them and use them for years and years and years. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the roller, slide it onto the roller sleeve like that. And you wanna make sure that your roller doesn't have any gunk or stuff that could fall off into your uh, tray. Now they do have these things called tray liners. Um, if you're interested in those, uh, they're great. They're pretty cheap. They're like a dollar each, I think. Um, I'm not a big fan of them. I really don't care about cleaning out my metal tray. I highly recommend you buy a metal tray. They're easier to clean out. Just make sure you clean them out. This one's been used for probably five, 10 years. And as you can see, there's no paint in it or anything. And that's because after each use, I do clean it and I get everything out of there. So highly recommend buying a metal tray. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually do some painting. I'm gonna show you some really quick tips when we're doing the main painting, and then we'll come back and show you how to do the cutting in. Okay, so when it comes to painting on your ceiling, we're going to take this uh, big gallon. Instead of stirring it, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just shake it like this for you know maybe five minutes or maybe a minute to two minutes. Um, I've already done that quite a bit, so um, I don't need to do that anymore. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up this easy pour spout. There we go. So you can see there's an easy pour spout there. I got some paint on my fingers, no big deal. It's a water-based paint. We'll wash our hands off here in a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour in probably about, you know, a couple inches of paint here. I don't want so much paint where I'm not gonna use it all. I typically don't like putting paint back into a paint can. Um, because once it's started drying out, um, you don't want to mix that old paint with, or half dried paint with uh, fresh paint. So I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit. One other tool that you definitely should invest in is a nice drop cloth. Once again, they'll last years and years and years. So when you load your brush, don't ever dip a brush into a can. Please do not do that. And whenever you do, don't go more than that deep into the paint. You have no reason to dip a brush beyond where my fingers are because all that paint will get up in the top here and be very difficult to get out. So when you're, when you're loading your brush, if you want to come down here, we're just going to do just like that. 
and then we're going to offload some of that brush on one side only okay and then we're going to leave the paint on the other so you can see that if you want to and then if you want to take it off the edge you can kind of bring it off to the paint tray see how that edge is dry that edge is really wet then what we're going to do is we're going to come up and we're just going to when we're doing this we're just we don't care if we get some on the wall because we're going to be painting the wall anyways and we just want to put a nice even coat we want to keep our brush loaded so if you're going to be up a lot one of these little cups is a great little investment as well and then you can be you can stay up there and not have to come up and down this is a pretty small project so i'm just going to up, jump up and down just so i don't have to clean this but if you were doing a larger project i'd highly encourage going ahead and getting uh, filling this up and using this as well now, i want to put on enough paint where it's on there thick but i don't want it to drip obviously so it's kind of a balance there you want it on there thick enough so you don't have to do a ton of coats and my goal here is to get a little bit on the wall as well so that i don't have any space where it's not covered in paint so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut in everything and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to roll okay so we're back um we're now going to do the rolling as you can see we got all the cutting in done um, a couple tips there as well is if you have to take a break or something, make sure you put your paintbrush in a zip tie bag. Um, if you're going to be a little bit longer, like a couple hours, you might even take some cellophane wrap and go around the paintbrush and then put it in a bag. Um, if it's going to be overnight, I would encourage you to do that with the cellophane and then put it in the freezer actually. That will reduce the speed of the, um, of the drying time as well. Um, if it's going to be more than 24 hours, always wash your brush out. Don't try to leave it longer. If you do freeze the brush, obviously give yourself enough time for it to thaw. Um, so pull it out a little bit, about an hour before you start painting or whatnot. We got our roller that we did the little trick where we used the blue tape um, and put the blue tape on and pulled all the fuzz off. So we got a clean roller here and we're going to get rolling. So um, the way you do this is make sure you load your roller really nice. Um, you're going to actually pull the paint towards and then just kind of roll it down. Now you want a nice consistent amount of paint on the roller. As you can see there, it's the first time I ever loaded this roller. And I encourage um, buying new rollers. I don't think it's worth cleaning them out. If, if you like to, there's a little tool you can use to squeeze all the stuff out. But I've never really liked a roller after I've used it before. I never really like how it, how it works again. So it's up to you. If you want to try to clean your rollers out, you're more than welcome to, but I highly encourage just buying new rollers. So now that I've got a nice amount of paint on the roller, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start rolling it out. So um, the trick to using a roller is to not put a lot of pressure on it and just let the paint come off of the roller. So you're going to take your time nice and slow. Um, you want to keep a wet edge, but you want to keep an even coat. And once again, I don't want to put any pressure. I don't want to push the paint off of the roller. I want to let the, the paint just kind of come off the roller. I want to just reload the, the roller again. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to get paint on this roller again. And don't be afraid to go over the area that you went um, and you did the, the uh, paintbrush with. You want to get rid of some of those paintbrush lines um, with the roller. And we're going to keep a nice wet edge. Now, there's a little bit of fuzz here. Go ahead and wipe that off with your finger and get that off of there because you'll have a, a, a mark on your wall if you don't. Once again, don't be afraid to get some paint on here. Um, if you do it this way, you can usually paint most rooms um, in one or two coats. If you push the roller, you're going to have to put five or six coats on because you're not going to get the same amount of coverage. And you're going to paint in a W motion and nice and light. I'm not pushing on the roller. I'm letting the roller just kind of glide across the surface. And then when you're lifting off the wall, kind of like let it just, you know, kind of fade out like you're doing a fade. You know, just get away from it. Don't stop and pull because you can see there's a line there now. So what I want to do is just kind of come across and fade away. So those are my tips for rolling. Just keep on working your way across the room. Okay guys, we're finally to the point where we're actually going to start painting the main wall color. What we've done here is we've got all the trim cut in. Um, as you can see, if you get close, 
um, you'll see that we have a lot of over paint um, from where we just went over. So, you know, our trim around our windows, you can see up here really good where it just went over. You don't have to worry about that when you're doing the trim first. Same thing with the ceiling. We got the trim paint down to the ceiling and the same thing on the baseboard. So now all the baseboards, window trims, and the ceiling all have two coats of paint. Um, so now we're on to our favorite part, which is the cutting in of the wall color. So this is the part that everybody always gets concerned with. And as I shared with you earlier, and I'm gonna share it again, the number one thing that's most important is the brush. You wanna spend some money here. You wanna talk about painter's tape, I would highly recommend that you do not use painter's tape. It's a lot of extra prep work. Sometimes it'll peel off paint in places you don't want to peel off paint. Um, the blue tape is not is the lesser of the two. The green tape is the better. If you can see, they call it frog tape or whatever. I will tell you, both of them will bleed. So if you want a perfect job and not a ton of extra work, just buy a good brush and just don't get these at all. So the next thing we talk about is actually picking a color. That's a really fun process. I want to give you some tips on that. Number one, when you're picking colors for an, an area of your home, make sure you get the palette of all your other colors out in your house as well. You want it to feel that it's working with the whole flow of the home and not just it's on its own room. So every room you walk into is a different feel. So we're going to pull out our whole color palette for our house and pull those color chips together and pick a color that's going to work or um, work well with that. Now, if you're painting everything over again, there's a couple things. Number one, we can suggest a, a designer to come and help you pick out a full color palette for your whole home. I highly encourage that if you're gonna pick out new colors for your home to pick out everything at the same time. So they can go through your whole home and say, here's what we're gonna pick out. They'll usually start with one main color and then build off of that. Now, sometimes you'll use the same color through the whole home, that's great too, and then use decorations to kind of change the colors per the season or per the room. Um, but what I like to do is pick one main color and then build off of that. So our color that we had in our home was a color that's very, very popular, and that's called Edgecomb Gray. It's a Benjamin Moore color. It's this color here. Now, when we chose this bathroom color, we decided to go with this green, which is, in my opinion, is a money green. We also have a few of these colors mixed into the palette as well, so we're kind of working off of this kind of little area of the color chart here. Now, if you do not want to go wrong with color, a great way to go is with the historic collection at Benjamin Moore. These colors are um, tried and true. Um, they're going to be fairly safe, neutral colors. As long as you don't start mixing from one side of the palette to the other, you should be very safe. One other thing I suggest when picking color for your room is go ahead and get a larger swatch of one of these color palettes here and go ahead and put a couple of them on different walls with just some blue tape or something and look at how it changes through the day. So don't paint right away, get to enjoy the color and see if you really like it after the shadows and the, the, the light has changed across the room through the day. Now we're gonna do the fun part, we're gonna cut in. And what, how we do that is number one, um, I showed you in the tools, great party brush, two and a half inch with an angle and a um, paint handle bucket that you can use while you're up on the ladder. So the way you're going to do this is we're going to first load our brush. So we're going to dip the brush in. Once again, you don't want to dip very deep. You can see I dipped in about probably a half an inch and we're going to clean off one side. It's going to be the side that's going to be against the angle. So in this case, I'm going to pull it towards me and the brush is going to be clean on that side and be wet on that side. So once again, clean on this side, wet on this side. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up into this corner. And before I start painting, I'm gonna dab it down below. So you can see I've created all that wet paint I've offloaded onto there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit on the edge. So I'm gonna dip it in there. And then I'm gonna go off to the side and I'm gonna start pulling in towards the, towards the corner. And I'm just going to let the edge of the brush do that sharp line for me and I'm just gonna bring it straight across. If you don't get it perfect, like if I was to go like down like that and then back up, 
The cool thing is, is you can come back in and you can keep on adding more. If you take a little extra time here, your, per your paint job is gonna be perfect. So once again, I'm gonna offload a little bit below, as you can see, and I'm gonna come up to that corner and I'm gonna push up into it and come straight across. Now, what I find that works well is I try to hold my pinky out a little bit. You wanna hold the brush at about a 45 degrees. So when you're pulling it across, you get that nice clean, clean angle like you see there. And then what you wanna do, after you get that nice tight cut like that, is you wanna come and put the paint on, once again, half an inch, pull it off that, the one side, and then the side with the paint, come in and fill it in a little bit. Now don't go right up to the top, like hold it back down about half an inch and then you can fill up into it if you need to. I just want it to be on there nice and thick so I don't have to put 40 coats of paint on here. And that's it for that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut in all your corners the same way. So you're just gonna come in here. And what I like to do is I like to get just one side first and then I'll let that dry and then I'll come in and get the other side so you're not, you're not fighting both sides of that. And that's cutting in. We'll come back to the final piece which will be rolling after I get this all cut in. Hopefully you learned something. Okay guys, we made it to the final step, which is rolling out the walls. We did the cutting. I cut in twice with a good brush. Once again, we're using that purdy two and a half inch with the angle, um, as you can see, really nice and sharp brush to cut in those edges. Um, you can see how nicely everything looks. Just took a little time to do it and it works out really well. So we are using, just so you guys know, um, in this particular application, because it's a bathroom, we're using the Benjamin Moore. Um, we wanted a flat finish, but flat paint in a bathroom isn't ideal. So we're using this product, which does cost a little bit more, but in a small room like this, you're only gonna need a gallon of paint anyway, so you can splurge a little bit and get a higher quality product. This is called A-U-R-A, Aura um, Bath and Spa um, Matte Finish, and this is a really cool paint. Um, one thing you do need to know when using this paint though, is you have to make sure that your cut-in is dry before you roll. Um, this product does not react well um, with a wet edge. Uh, it, it, it creates a weird funky finish. So here we go. Um, I got some paint poured into the tray here. Uh, once again, as you guys know, um, I'm not a big fan of tray liners. Uh, this is the same tray I used earlier in the video. And uh, we're just gonna load our ro roller. Um, the way we do that is just keep on going towards the, um, the paint until we get to a certain point and then we'll, we'll pull some of that off. Uh, my goal here is to just keep on turning this until it kind of rolls on its own. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put it against a wall. And once again, I'm gonna let the roller do the work. I'm not gonna push the roller hard. I'm just gonna let it offload the paint right onto the wall. And if there are any boogers or anything, I'm gonna, once again, pull the booger with my finger and I'm just gonna wipe it on a, a rag. And I'm just going to, once again, come into a couple coats here. As you can see, I'm not pushing that paint off. I'm just letting it equally pull the paint off the roller. I'm gonna load again. I wanna make sure I got plenty of paint on the roller as I'm spreading it across the wall here. We wanna get close to our cut-in surfaces so that we get that nice texture from the roller, but not so close where we have to come back and uh, repaint the white, obviously. Um, if you do that nice and slow, you won't get uh, marks or where it's gonna be lighter and darker, so you're not gonna have to do multiple coats. You can do this all in one coat. Um, so, I hope you guys learned a few great tips from us today. However, painting is not for everybody and we understand that. And after watching our video, you might say that looks a little bit more complicated than I'd like to get involved in, or that's just not for me. If that's the case, please contact us. We wanna be your, your person for anything house related. So call us and what we'll do is we'll hook you up with some great painters. We have some great resources to provide some of the best painters in Rochester. And once again, we try to find some affordable ones too so we can keep it semi-affordable for you. So I hope you enjoyed these videos. I look forward to teaching some other things as it pertains to taking care of your home. Talk to you soon.